airfield on Christmas Island in the far Pacific. Along this strip of coral, hundreds of miles from anywhere, is drawn up an RAF task force of Valiant, Shackletons and Canberras, waiting to make history. Suez had shifted but not slackened government desires that Britain should remain a great power. Keeping us one depended ever more upon the bomb. In 1957, ministers were told what it took to become a proper nuclear power. Not just atomic weapons, but hydrogen bombs and the means to deliver them. The first fully-fledged uh, British Prime Minister uh, with his hands on the deterrent was probably Harold Macmillan. Every Prime Minister since Macmillan has been briefed on how to launch a nuclear strike and on what it would mean if the bombers rolled out for real. They knew, too, that Number 10 could be the first target for the Russians. One of the nagging questions for anybody who lived in Britain in the 1950s in the shadow of the bomb is what would happen if the Russians struck first and killed the Prime Minister and the Cabinet? Well, here, in a single paragraph, is the answer. The head of Bomber Command, if he had to, would launch the strike himself. And here is the desperate doomsday scenario on almost a schoolboy's chart of just how close, how fine-tuned it would be. The V-bombers would have exactly three and a half minutes from getting the order to scramble before the first Russian missiles struck their airfields. Desperate stuff. Scramble, scramble, scramble. The doomsday drill was exercised endlessly. The bolt from the blue plan, the headless chickens contingency, has been one of the best kept secrets since Britain acquired its nuclear weapons. I think there is almost certainly the case that if the country was attacked and if you couldn't get uh, uh, any uh, political clearance and it was clear beyond peradventure, then I think the Commander-in-Chief, Bomber Command and later uh, you know, the submarine captain w would have said it was his decision whether to do it or not do it. Those in the know were kept to a tiny circle. Frank Cooper, a highly nuclear civil servant, was in it. The decision to launch that strike going to a man in uniform seemed to me a very unlikely thing ever to have happened. But, I mean, supposing everybody was dead, all the politicians were dead, uh, the country had got to have some kind of leader. Uh, where else are you going to get the leader from? I mean, uh, you probably almost certainly have had to have had a military government anyway. Uh, 